to this week's 10 Minute 2 Tip Tuesday, Thanksgiving edition. I'm your host, Amelia, occupational therapist and owner and founder of Higher Standards Caregiver Training. And as you may have guessed, I have two very, very, very important Thanksgiving themed tips for you today. So make sure you're watching all the way to the end. And if you see something that you think is valuable information in here, which I hope, I think that you will, then please make sure that you are sharing this so that um, more caregivers are getting this information, okay? Before we get started, this is for educational purposes only. It's not a substitute for health or medical advice or a therapeutic relationship. If anything that you hear reminds you of someone that you know, someone you care for, someone you love, someone you work with, etc., yada yada, so on and so forth, then please make sure that you are advocating for that person to get seen, assessed, addressed, evaluated, and treated by the appropriate healthcare provider if they need it, as this is really and truly for educational purposes only. Okay, so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, it's Thanksgiving, I should do a Thanksgiving theme, 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday. What do we do on Thanksgiving? Hmm, well, we visit with our family, right? That's the most important thing, um, being with the people that we love. Uh, we try as much as we can to avoid political discussions. That's probably not appropriate for 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday. What else do we do? Oh, we eat. And eating is one of the most important things that we do, obviously, just to live and survive. It's also one of the um, most important things that we do as caregivers if we're assisting someone else with feeding themselves. So I thought I would go over today um, something that, that can happen quite commonly that we really want to avoid um, simply because people don't know, they don't know better. Um, you know, no one's told them that this isn't a safe thing to do. Specifically when thinking about feeding people who are bed bound. Okay, so what often happens when people are bed bound um, and they need to be fed, they need assistance with feeding is um, unknowingly or just kind of, you know, um, as part of the feeding process, people will get fed while they're in a reclined position or while they're lying down. And this is really, really super dangerous. Um, it's dangerous because when any of us are lying flat on our back, the muscles that help us swallow and the mechanisms kind of that happen in our, in our throat, in our upper throat to help us swallow safely, they don't function that well when they're not straight up and down with gravity working with them. When you, so it's harder for anyone to swallow safely if they're reclined or if they're laying flat. Um, but when we have people who may be so weak that they are already bed bound and they are probably at an elevated risk for um, aspirating, which is when food or drink or, or something that's not supposed to go down into the lungs gets down into the lungs, um, those folks tend to be at a higher risk of aspirating anyway. And so when we feed them and they're laying down, that makes them at a very, very, very high risk of aspiration. So we never want to feed people laying down. Instead, we want to make sure. So first of all, if someone can get out of bed to eat, if it's safe for them to sit up um, at either at the edge of bed or maybe sitting up in a wheelchair or getting them to that dining room table, if that's safe to do, then that's always going to be a safer option for feeding and eating because that person is upright, they're in a seated position, they're in a position where um, we're sort of built to go ahead and eat. But if someone really truly is bed bound and they can't get up um, and they are eating you know, orally, they are taking food and nutrition in through their mouth, then we wanna make sure and elevate the head of the bed as much as we can um, to make sure that they are swallowing as safely as possible. Um, uh, of course, we have to make sure that that person is supported adequately in the bed, that they're not gonna fall over to one side or the other, but we want to get them as upright as possible um, so that when they're eating, they're, we're, we're not increasing the risk of them choking or them aspirating from being flat or from them being reclined. So getting people as close as possible as we can into that upright position before we start to feed anyone. Okay, so that's tip number one for caregivers today. Um, you know, we never want to feed anyone when they're laying flat or in that reclined position. We want them to get 
upright as much as possible. If this is like ringing bells for you right now, again, I really, really strongly encourage you. Um, if you think that the person you're caring for has issues with swallowing, please reach out to your healthcare provider. Um, make sure that you are advocating for that person to be seen and treated by an appropriate provider to deal with that issue, as obviously when someone aspirates, that can be a life-threatening issue. So again, if this is making bells go off for you, please, please reach out to the healthcare provider um, for that person and um, let them know that you think that there is a problem so that someone can come in and give you, uh, do an evaluation and give you the exact things that need to be done to help make sure the person that you're caring for is swallowing as safely as possible. Okay, um, tip number two for caregiving organizations, as always, y'all, your caregivers, you're gonna, if you're watching this and you're a caregiver, maybe you're working on Thanksgiving, you know, if you're a professional caregiver, maybe you're working on Thanksgiving, if you're watching this and you're the leader of a caregiver organization, I guarantee you, you have caregivers who are out there, they're gonna be working this holiday. Make sure you let your caregivers know how thankful you are for them and what they're doing for you, for your organization, and most importantly, for your clients, for the per people or the person that they are caring for that day. Of course, um, you know, there as a healthcare provider, I've worked plenty of Thanksgivings myself, um, but we wanna make sure and let those caregivers know how very, very thankful for them we are because they really are, they're making the world go around for everyone else right now. Um, out there taking care of clients the best way, way that they can on these important holidays, all right? So if you have a plan in place already to make sure that your caregivers um, are getting that extra special thanks, then that's awesome. If you, if you don't yet or you haven't quite thought about that, then big tip for today, do something, anything. It can be just something even so small, but let them know how thankful you are for them and how much you appreciate all of their work every single day that they're there, but especially um, on Thanksgiving and those other holidays. All right, that is it for me today. I hope everyone has a very safe and happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope that everyone has an opportunity to spend some time with their loved ones um, and that uh, no horrendous political conversations ensue. Whoop, whoop, this is what happens sometimes, people. Um, uh, anyway, until next time, y'all, please stay healthy, stay well, and most of all, take care. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye, guys.